Adam McGoyan is here, the director of that film, which is called Chloe. It's hard, I think, sometimes, hard to keep up with life generally, but hard to make out of a radio audio uh, clip from the movie what was going on there. But can I give the literally 15 second version of the storyline? Because I don't want to do injustice to it, but I also don't want to give it away before we chat about the movie. And welcome, by the way. Hi. Um, a woman suspects her husband, woman, Julianna Moore, suspects her husband, Liam Neeson, is fooling around on her hires escort uh, uh, Amanda Seafried to um, test him out, as it were, uh, and it sort of unfolds from there. I mean, that, yeah, you know, now there's much good. more to it, but sure. I mean, that's the real uh, sort of, uh, you know, the real short, short summary. This is a movie which is unabashedly based in Toronto, and I wanted to just start with that because when I watched it, I was amazed right from the beginning that you see everything in it. I was really proud, I mean, to be candid on as a Torontonian about our city. I thought that it, it, uh, it, Yorkfield's never looked cooler. The DIP, uh, the Diplomatico at College in Clinton, is right there in all of its glory. It's a key vantage point. What made you decide to do that? Well, when I got the script, it was set in San Francisco, and I got really excited because I love San Francisco, and I thought I, I'd love to shoot there. But when I went to Scout, I had this strange sense of everything I was seeing I'd seen before. Um, and some of my favorite films are set in San Francisco from uh, like Dirty Harry to Vertigo to uh, countless other movies. And I thought, there's nothing new that I would visually be able to give to this city that hasn't been explored. But Toronto, on the other hand, which is where I live and where uh, most of my movies have been set, it, it's never actually been shown as Toronto in a foreign financed film. Like, um, and I, it, it actually usually gets to do what Chloe, the prostitute, does, which is pretend to be something else. <laughs> it pretends, you know, for a certain amount of money to be Boston or New York or Chicago. So I thought this was a really opportun good opportunity. And I also felt the city has changed in the past few years. There are these, you know, landmark, you know, amazing architectural uh, developments. And I wanted to show it off, really. Um, so the next thing was to produce, uh, convince the producers that that would work and that I could make tr Toronto look as sexy as San Francisco, which is, uh, which is challenging, but actually not really when, when you frame it a certain way and you look at what we have in the city, which is pretty amazing. This, we live in a great place. And last week I was uh, doing this press tour in the U.S. going to all these American cities, and they're all saying is that what Toronto really looks like and I thought yeah I'm is. glad to hear that because you and I are both boosters and so we'd yeah. say it looks great because yeah. we like it but you're saying others who what about those who came in to be part of the production or and they've been here before obviously yeah. but or those who are now watching the movie and haven't been here I, I they, think that's amazing I mean to me the critical thing was I was in San Francisco last week doing press and they all know that the film was set in San Francisco because the writer's from San Francisco and uh, I thought that'd be my toughest audience but in fact they were really um they were really thankful to be able to see a place that they had heard of and didn't really exist in their visual imagination, except for like, you know, seeing Tower and certain things, which aren't seen in these movies. And even when they come for the film festival, they're seeing a kind of certain little part exactly. of downtown. That, That's uh, right. Uh, yeah. So what you're seeing here really is a, are, are three lives functioning in the city as we as Torontonians would understand them to. So if he's a prophet U of T, the places he hangs out, the places where Chloe works, the places where uh, Julianne Moore's character works, they're all realistic to how those people would live, like a high-end doctor, a uh, university prof, and, 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 a, and a prostitute as well. You know, like these are all, you know, so you're, 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 you're feeling that it's, it, it's not fake, I, I think. I think that the actual, uh, and, and also I think it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to make you understand what's special about the city, which is that, you know, we do have these really definable kind of neighborhoods, and they're all, we have these arteries which are really unique in the city. I mean, the, obviously we have the, the streetcar lines, but we have these ravines, and we take them for granted, but that was something I really wanted to focus on. We have these incredible swaths of nature that kind of course through our, our downtown core, and so to have a house that overlooks one of the ravines and use all this stuff visually to make it exciting, you know, to make it really rich and make it look like uh, something that's um, mysterious and sexy and erotic. That was really my, my uh, job. So you mentioned, uh, and I'm going to skip to this, and I'll come back to the sexual energy in this film, which to me was something. And I, you know, I, I, I know, I don't know that much relative to some others you might talk to about movies, but uh, that may put me in the same category as, as a lot of the people listening in terms of how they're made and so on. But I'll come back to the sexual energy. But I wanted to ask you, you said three characters. I would have added the fourth, maybe the son. Right, so you've got sure. the wife, the husband, the son, and, of course, Chloe, the yes, escort. Sure. 
is it harder or more difficult in your job as the director to make a film because you know that only only has four characters in it? There's a couple of other people, secretaries and waiters and various others. But is it is it more of a challenge well, for you to do it or less? It's a challenge in as much as you have to find the best cast possible. You have to be able to find people that are really able to hold your interest, and uh, and and the material has to be complex. It has to have enough psychological uh, depth so that it stays interesting and and. and uh, and I think we have to think of the character of the city as being another character in this movie, uh, to me. So, so once I actually had this cast lined up and I knew that we could shoot it in Toronto, uh, I got really excited about it because I felt that you know this could be really something unusual, different, something we've never seen before. And uh, the situation between these two women, uh, Julianne Moore and Am Amanda Seyfried, is very... Uh, original, you know, this idea of these two women who have these competing fantasies of what the other represents, the idea of a woman hiring a prostitute to test her husband, it's not something normally what it, it's do. It's very right? electric. I mean, to yeah. me, again, as a sort of a, you know, uh, I'll call myself uneducated person in, fi in film, but, I, but I'm, I'm a consumer, though, like sure. lots of the people listening. Yeah. I watched Julianne Moore's eyes, for example, and she's the wife, again, that, yeah. that, that is suspicious of her husband and thinks for sure he's yeah. running around and hires the escort. Yeah. In her eyes, and, and she's, I think she's fabulous in the movie, but in her eyes there's this mix of being hurt by what's going on, but also this incredible sort of sexual yeah, messaging because, that's going on. Well, look, and that's partly your skill sure, and hers. Sure. It's both. Why, look, uh, if you suspect your spouse is having, uh, suspect your, your spouse is having an affair, you wouldn't hire a prostitute, only you would hire a prior investigator, you would try and find it by other means. The fact that she hires a prostitute is telling. It means that she doesn't want to just find out if he's having an affair. She wants to find out what it feels like to have an affair. Uh, with him, because in fact they've been married for a very long time. The um, the a bit of the spark has gone out of their yeah, own for sure. Relationship, I mean, like yeah. the the erotic life in their relationship has somehow completely evaporated. So she thinks this is a way to reconnect with the side of her husband, to hear it th from someone else's perspective. I don't know if she's aware of that as she's doing it, but as you said, if she can convey to the viewer that, that she has mixed emotions about this, that she's trying to figure out um, and she's trying to kind of coordinate all sorts of different things then it really takes off. It becomes something else. It oh, becomes yeah. this other And I can tell you, she does and you do. I mean, because it's your skill and hers. And the I mean, it's the whole crew. It's the camera crew. But, I mean, her eyes, with that mix between being hurt as she hears described alleged sexual encounters between her husband and Chloe, uh, have this incredible mix between, on the one hand, looking like she's about to burst into tears, but yeah. on the other hand, being kind of turned on exactly. by what she's hearing. Uh, absolutely. It's and what makes she, this and, movie very and, captivating. And she becomes kind of addicted to these stories, and she wants it to go further and further and further. And, and meanwhile, Chloe has, she becomes addicted to the way Julie or Catherine um, listens to her, right? So the two women find themselves completely intoxicated by each other, and this leads to an unexpected place for both of them.